very warm welcome. Thank you for joining us at Hyde Park on Other Dharana 24. Tonight, I thought of talking about cricket. Cricket in Sri Lanka. Um, World Cup winners in 1996 after making our test debut in 1982. But where are we today? Are we keeping with the changes, the pace of the changes uh, around the world in terms of the sport? How are we dealing with these changes? Is, is our administrative in line with the, the evolving changes world over? And where do we go from here? What's good? What's bad? To talk about all this, I thought I'd invite to our studios the maiden test century maker for Sri Lanka in test cricket. In 1982, um, Siddharth Vettamuni has brought glory to Sri Lanka, continued to play cricket, and then also went on to be uh, the interim committee chairman for Sri Lanka cricket between 2014 and 2015. Um, was a member of the selector, headed the selectors, and, um, and then I think Sri Lankan fans look up to you to find out where we went wrong or what good is left uh, for Sri Lanka cricket. Thank you for joining me. I'm very happy to be with you today. Thank, Thank you me. very much. I'd like to go back to um, the beginning of test cricket for Sri Lanka. Uh, it wasn't an easy, um, easy path for us uh, to gain recognition. But uh, thereon, we went on to win 1996, uh, the World Cup for Sri Lanka, um, the, the, the most glorious of times uh, for us uh, in Sri Lanka. Uh, but today, there's a lot of criticism. Uh, there seems to be uh, some disappointment uh, among fans. Um, and also, uh, I, I, I should say, uh, it seems chaotic to us looking at what's happening. But if you may take us through uh, the journey, uh, since you have been one of our very first uh, players. Yeah, interesting question, Indivari. Um, you see, from 1982 to 1996, I think we made good progress. We had progress. And then in 1996, we won this World Cup, which changed the whole uh, view or perspective on the game. Mm -hmm. We had a boom. You know, it, it's like any other boom. We had a cricket boom. We had many more kids playing cricket. We had many more clubs come into, into playing cricket. The times I played, or even up to that period, there were maybe 10, 12 clubs that played cricket. Most of them were Colombo-based, fed by the Colombo schools. And it was just a simple uh, setup. But all that changed after 1996. Mm -hmm. We had many more clubs coming into the game. We had many more children from the outstations want to get into the game, which was a significant fact. And we did not keep pace with the changes that were taking. We did not take the game out of Colombo. We did not develop enough coaching skills amongst the people who wanted to become coaches. Mm -hmm. And we did not change the infrastructure that was needed to feed all these cricketers that were coming into the system. We have an abundance of talent. We had and we still have. That I'll always say. We are not short of talent. We still have maybe per capita more children playing cricket in this country than any other country. But we don't have the right feeder system. And we have not kept pace. I always say. Uh, you know, in 1996, if you had a mobile phone, mm -hmm. you won't be using the same mobile phone today because things have changed so much. It's just the same in the game of cricket. Things have changed. We have not kept, kept pace with the change in the necessary way. And our club cricket system and the voting system, mm -hmm. which we have embraced during the last 20 years, is, I think, one of the key reasons why we are in this plight today. It's not something that has happened overnight. It has happened over many, many years. And now we are seeing the results of that neglect. Uh, you spoke about uh, the club cricket system and uh, 
a massive gripe about uh, the number of votes in Sri Lanka, 140 if I'm not mistaken. 147 147, if I'm not okay, 147. But then compar compared to India and Australia, where it's, it's, it's a mere 30 or 40 votes, uh, which, uh, uh, are, um, which, uh, which make the uh, selection for the uh, head of the cricketing body. Um, but in Sri Lanka, it said this and then votes are bought, it's sold, and there's a lot of corruption. We see this, uh, we see this worse than when we talk about politics. Uh, but should we get there? Because this is a beautiful game, and we say a game of the gentleman. What, what yes, happened here? It's really sad. Let me put it into perspective. So we have 147 votes. India has 38, I think. Mm -hmm. Australia, maybe seven. New Zealand, oh, five. Okay. South Africa, eight. England, 18 or 22. <laughs> Little Sri Lanka has 147 votes. Now the problem is, if you want to be an elected member of the cricket board, you need to pamper to those votes. Because there are just too many votes, and those votes are, there are clubs that don't play cricket who have two votes each. Oh. So it is a chaotic situation. We have to revamp that system, because the guys who get elected under this system will pander to the requirements of the clubs. They are scared to make the move, which is to have a tournament, a first class tournament, at a different level, played over four days. We tried doing this since 2000, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I first got into an interim committee in 2000. Since then, many, many times we've tried to change and say we need a better first class tournament. You cannot have 26 clubs playing first class cricket because it just dilutes the talent. Mm -hmm. You need to be at a different level. You know, people ask me, why are we in this situation? And I, I, I say, it's like, you know, you're asking an O-level student to go and sit for the A-level. Mm -hmm. That is the gap between our cricket and international cricket. We have not laid the foundation to get our players playing at the right level. So you can't blame the players because that's all they're exposed to. You know, you watch them play and you think they're just not ready. But who do we blame here? Um, we, we say this is the system here. There's a system of a number of uh, club votes or, or um, about 26 or 7 uh, first class cricketing clubs and then um, 147 votes. Some of these clubs don't even play cricket, but these votes are bought if I'm not mistaken. Um, but at the same time, we talk about a corrupt administration and now in recent days about the behavior and discipline of uh, cricketers themselves. But I'll get to that uh, later. If you say we cannot blame uh, the cricketers or the players here, who do we blame? Is it the administration or is it, is it, is it, uh, is it the political structure here? Because of course, uh, SLC uh, has, has nothing to do with the political structure. But, but who do we blame here? You see, I think ultimately it is at the ministerial level the, where the responsibility lies. Mm -hmm. Our cricket comes under the Ministry of Sport and the minister has the power to make a call and say, I want to make these changes. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, until the Minister of Sport decides enough is enough, I'm going to change this, nothing can really happen you see uh, when i was in the interim committee uh, sorry to interrupt you were never voted in this was no. as as chairman of interim committee yes. appointed by the sports minister by the sports minister uh, was it uh, minister navin desanayak at yes. the time okay yes so at that time you know i got prasanna jawadana justice uh, prasanna jawadana the late justice prasanna jawadana to look at the possibility of getting a new constitution mm -hmm. in place we worked out something and the icc told us to follow the Irish and the South African constitution that they have been very successful, which we did. We gave it to them. They were very happy with what they saw. And we were trying to make this change. And what Prasanna told me then was, through an act of parliament, this can be done. You don't need to do anything else. Through an act of parliament, it can be done. Mm -hmm. So to do that, it is the politicians that will have to get it done. You know, mm -hmm. the people who contest cannot do anything about it. So ultimately, the responsibility will lie in the hands of the sports minister because cricket comes under the sports ministry. So unless the sports minister decides, look, something needs to be done, 
and I am making the change. And I have to tell you, during that period, the ICC gave us the green light to make the change. Okay. They said, either through the interim committee or the elected body, you can do it. But it never happened. I won't go there. How this, what, what period was this again? Same period, 2014. Mm -hmm. We got the green light from the ICC in writing. Actually, it's the prime so minister. So ICC uh, green light is necessary, approval is necessary if we are to make any changes no, here. No, well, I don't think they'll interfere, but mm -hmm. we wanted to do it the proper way. Mm -hmm. And I think it, uh, the, the, the prime minister of the country spoke to the ICC. And the ICC gave their blessing, saying, fine, we'll give you this period, and if you want, we will support you with technical support. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll give you technical support. Mm -hmm. But nothing happened. And that was the end of so that. So everything boils down to parliament. <laughs> uh, it's um, crazy. Uh, so so moving, moving on, I think, uh, I, I really want to touch about uh, the behavior, the discipline of players. Uh, like I said, the gentleman's game, this is what we, we've been taught uh, since we were children. We've said, this is the gentleman's game. Uh, an example of a gentleman in um, uh, the gentleman's game. Uh, thank you very much for being such a great uh, brand ambassador for Sri Lanka. Um, we've seen many younger players too take on Sri Lanka's name uh, to, to the rest of the world. But, but today, uh, there can be opinion among cricketers that they, it, it is their own merit that makes them a national player going international, so they're not really responsible for representing Sri Lanka, uh, to say, so to say, as, as an ambassador for the country. But doesn't it mean that representing Sri Lanka itself, under, under Sri Lanka's name itself, means they have a responsibility to protect uh, the name of the country, to represent Sri Lanka's name, because it was Sri Lanka cricket that brought us glory. Of course, you know, it's, it's the player's responsibility to behave in the way he should. Mm -hmm. But I also think it is the responsibility of the management. The manager has to take responsibility for the behavior of players. I remember in my time, I will not mention names, we had a manager who would tell us, 8 o'clock sharp, be in the bus. And at 8-1, if you weren't there, you missed the bus, you had to take your own transport. That's discipline, and, and that kind of discipline you need. So, you know, what we saw of late was just not acceptable. But ultimately, it's the responsibility of the management to make sure that the right people are managing and making sure that such things don't happen. Is it only management? Shouldn't us as individuals uh, also of take course, responsibility? Of course, of course. I mean, uh, pro probably you were brought up in such a way where you were taught to to uh, to to uh, behave or be disciplined in such a way. But uh, yes, we all come from different background. Uh, we are exposed to different circumstances, different uh, dif different uh, uh, situations. But once you come to that level, shouldn't shouldn't you also be mindful of where you are, who you're representing, and uh, where you're going. Absolutely. There is no excuse for what happened. Mm -hmm. But as I said, you know, it's a blooding of a of a cricketer mm -hmm. through the club system, through and when you start playing for your country, you need to be taught these basic things that you've got to abide by these rules and regulations. So yes, it's it's not on. Definitely not on. Uh, and is this also uh, the, is, is the problem that we have too many young players uh, uh, in our team today? We don't have senior players. We don't have anyone to set uh, an example to the rest of the team. Is that, could that be the reason why we're here? I don't think that's an excuse for poor behavior. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, if at all, as I said, you know, the management has to spell it out loud and clear. These are the rules and you abide by it and they must be uh, held accountable, that's it. So yes, there would have been some senior players uh, in that squad and they should have uh, maybe guided these youngsters, but it's just something that shouldn't happen. Uh, social media is a big topic today, not just in cricket. I mean, anywhere, everything changes, media, platforms. Today, social media, we rely on social media a lot. Uh, but in recent times, we've also seen uh, cricketers, international cricket players, uh, uh, resorting to and relying on social media to take their individual statements uh, to their fans, maybe. 
Uh, but in the past, we did see a strict um, disciplinary process where uh, even to talk to mainstream media, they would seek SLC approval. But here probably now, now there's no, if I'm not mistaken, there's no contract that they have entered into. But in recent times too, we did see um, uh, these uh, players resorting to social media to, ex uh, to, to maybe take out their statement. But how does this really impact a team uh, you, you've, you've been a great team player, but how does this affect? Uh, yes. You see, in my time, we didn't have this mm -hmm. social media, so I'm really not in a position to say how best to handle it. But if you look at a player's contract vis-a-vis -vis the newspaper articles and interviews, they have to be cautious in what they say or mm -hmm. what they write. So I would think that even through social media, they need to be cautious. Mm -hmm. But then that's the responsibility of the board to spell it out and say, this is what you can say and this is what you can't. But there may be legal implications as well. So I don't think I'm too qualified to talk about that uh, um, subject. Let really. me take us back to the selection procedure, the process. Like I said, a young team uh, is, is uh, here. And then uh, there is also concern about the criteria brought uh, in uh, recent times. There's this fitness, um, uh, performance, discipline leadership skills uh, a number of uh, number of uh, aspects that are uh, taken into account when selecting a player do you agree with this system uh, from what i have read and seen i must say i have my reservations about the extent of uh, cuts that some of these players have received okay. you see i'll give you a simple example a guy plays for 10 years for his country and at the end of 10 years he's trying to live a certain life, maybe trying to build his house, buy a car, has children, there's all that. And if he's suddenly told you've got to take a 35% cut, I think that's too much. I haven't gone into too much details, but I've seen three senior players who have, ta who have taken very big cuts. And I, quite do I really don't agree with that. You know, I feel they should have maybe said, a 15% cut in the first year, give them notice and say, we are going down a further 15%. And at the end of the day, you can have all these uh, methods of evaluating players, but I'm asking one question. I have saw Angelo Matthews, Dinesh Chandimal, and Dimut Karnaradna, okay. three of the more senior guys, have been cut down fairly drastically. But they are the only three match winners we have had in our country in this, in this lot, mm -hmm. besides Kusal Janit. And to think that they have come down so drastically, somehow, I, I just don't see the logic in it. And a test captain, Dimut Karnaratna is a test captain. I think the captaincy deserves uh, uh, a certain status you know, in the country. And you can't bring him down drastically to the sort of levels. Mm -hmm. I'm also curious as to the method they have done. So, you know, in fairness to the guys who've done this, um, I may not know all the facts, mm -hmm. but what I just see at a glance somehow uh, gives me the impression it's they've been a little too harsh. I remember in our time, uh, we wanted to ask for a 5% or 10% cut from our players and we had hell break loose. Uh, and that was because we didn't have money. The board and didn't have money. And you all were professional cricketers for some time and relied on that. Yes. Uh, so, you know, you build up a certain career and a lifestyle and then you need to either be given notice or you need to be, you know, it, the adjustment needs to be less harsh in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But doesn't the onus of being selected and the responsibility lie on the uh, cricketers as well? Because this structure, now they claim that this is not, uh, this uh, this evaluation criteria is not transparent uh, in the sense they have no idea. Uh, for example, performance and fitness, they agree with it. But uh, they've, they've not signed the current contract uh, uh, for future adaptability, leadership skills, etc. Some of these other uh, evaluation methods and criteria saying it, it, there could be favoration. Uh, so uh, at the same time in the past, we haven't seen any criteria at all. We had no idea how our cricketers were selected. But then again, we've produced some great cricketers. Uh, having said that, how do we move forward? Um, yes, there's a criteria now, and, and so many play cricket. And there's also corruption at whether it's club level or at uh, national, international level. You see, in the past, 
players were evaluated and if they didn't do well mm -hmm. then they were kept there or maybe there was a marginal drop till you got chucked out of your contract but there has to be a gradual process you see if a player plays for 10 years it means he's done reasonably well to be there for 10 years mm -hmm. so you know when i look at all our players i'm asking a simple question who are the only guys who won you matches in that squad mm -hmm. and to my mind Angelo comes to my mind, Dinesh Sandimal comes, they have won matches for Sri Lanka. Dimut Karnaratna has done wonders, I think in the last year he, you know, he did extremely well. And then to see such a drop in revenue, to me is a little baffling. But, uh, you know, I would say I don't know all the facts on uh, what basis, etc. But something is not quite right. A and maybe that's why there is conflict, they should have maybe had a better discussion, uh, got the views of the players and, and then decided to do what they were doing rather than say this is it. Mm -hmm. But don't you think this disagreement has gone out of uh, hand in the sense it's, it's now out in the media, uh, it's, it's a massive conflict. I remember in the past uh, uh, the cricketers used to, through the Players Association if I'm not mistaken, uh, would, would uh, sort out any um, disagreement or any uh, concerns they have. Um, of course even 2011, the World Cup, the, the cricketers uh, went without a contract and then the winning T20 uh, World Cup in 2014 we had uh, our cricketers had no contract and this time around too but this has become this has blown out of uh, its uh, proportion um, but isn't it part of being a gentleman in this game uh, to also keep it uh, within this body yes it has certainly blown out of proportion and i do hope both sides talk and resolve this fast in the past there has been there have been times where there have been disagreements but never a huge issue like this it was always resolved and if they didn't sign a contract before a tour it was because they just didn't have time and they had to go on to come back and sign there was never a serious conflict this seems serious and they should somehow resolve this and there's an involvement of an attorney was that the case before too i don't think so from what i can remember this is so no attorney or lawyer no i think this is the you. first time that uh, mm -hmm. it has got this serious but I hope, you know, for the sake of the game, for the sake of the cricketers and the administration that they resolve this and move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about captaincy, um, you mentioned that even the captain needs to be given certain special status or consideration uh, in, in how, how their uh, payments and how their uh, rewards are distributed. But uh, in the past, we've been talking about this uh, frequently, that we've seen about 12 captains changing within a period of two years. I think in your time and afterwards, uh, even during uh, the captaincy of Arjuna Ranatunga, we saw, uh, we saw him, we saw that uh, his captaincy, he had time to, to mingle with the players, to, to understand uh, his team and uh, to exert his leadership skills over the team. And hence, we won the World Cup too. But with these changes, wh what is really happening here in your view? Well, the changes only show that our cricket is in turmoil, that the talent, the, the, the quality of player that is coming up is uh, not meeting the expectations of the selectors or, or of what it is to play uh, at the national level. So this is something you will see for a while, mm -hmm. but hopefully it will settle down. I think the selectors are also desperately trying to find out who should be settling into these teams. And we have two World Cups coming, so maybe the selectors are desperately wanting to find out who is going to finally settle into these slots. And that's a process that takes place time to time. I remember in 2000, uh, when I became the chairman of selectors, we made some drastic changes and it slowly settled down. But then we had the talent. We had top quality players. Now, we do have the talent, but they need time to settle, you know. So I think the selectors will need to pick the right guys and then let them settle into the roles they are in. Let's take a short commercial break here at Hyde Park. We're in conversation with Siddharth Vettamuni, uh, Sri Lanka's first test cricket century maker. Welcome back. You're joining us at Hyde Park. Um, 
let's turn to talk a little about uh, the coaching staff. Uh, yes, we've seen many international coaches who've, who've uh, taken Sri Lanka to even win the World Cup for us. Um, and again, we have some amazingly talented local cricketers, retired, who, who have uh, proven themselves internationally as great coaches. But somehow, in Sri Lanka in recent times, we do see that whether it's um, international cr uh, coaches or locals, Sri Lankans, uh, either, either they, they, they leave before the contract expires or they're sacked by the administration. This could be a problem with the administration, but the complaint is that the admini they cannot work with the administration. In your view, um, how do we rectify this? Yeah, you see, way back in 1996, mm -hmm. we brought Dev Watmo mm -hmm. and he brought Alex Kunduri. At that time, it was definitely a necessary good move. We needed organization, we needed better physiotherapy and fitness levels, which were brought in by the likes of Alex Kunduri and uh, Dev Watmo. And the next few years too, we had foreign coaches. But I think if you look at today, I too seriously believe we need to bring in some of our own coaches. I'm not criticizing the foreign coaches. There may be a situation, we have heard, you know, there are jokes going around where they say, uh, there's a message given to the 12th man to go in mm -hmm. uh, and convey the message to the players. And that guy doesn't understand what he's been told to convey. So maybe we are not uh, using these coaches properly or the, our guys are not understanding them. But I seriously think like India, we need to get the likes of Mahela, Kumar, Roshan, all these guys to get involved. Now, I was very sad to see that Ranga Naherat has gone to Bangladesh. And I think that's useless. You know, we need guys like that. It is better for us to pay our own guys a little more and keep them. And that's what India is doing today, you know. Because we anyway pay thumping sums to our foreign Absolutely. coaches. Absolutely. And I don't think our coaches will even ask for those same amounts. But it is better for us to pay our guys, keep them so that, you know, they know what the culture of our cricket was, how we blooded the youngsters. So I think it's about time that our guys got involved, seriously. We had Chandika yeah. Hathru Singer um, also uh, we, we brought in Chandika Hathuru Singer, but that seemed to be, uh, that decision didn't seem to go well because there was there was a conflict with the administration again. So if we bring somebody the, of the likes of Mahela Jawadana, uh, Roshan Mahanama, Kumar Sangakar, or some of our uh, great players back to coach Sri Lanka, wouldn't you think we'll, we'll see history repeating? Not at all, not at all. These are guys who played for Sri Lanka for many years and who understand the system, who know. And I think it's also the responsibility of these ex-players to raise their hand and get involved, you see. When we left the game, we played for nothing. But we've been involved in administration from the 90s to of late. And that's something you give back to the game. And I think it is about time that our ex-players too the likes of Mahela. I'm glad to note that he's going to take over the under-19 squad, like Rahul Dravid is involved in the Indian under-19. I think guys like Roshan, Kumar, all of them can contribute a lot, and they must. I think they should. That's their responsibility. Um, you, 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 you talk a lot about uh, revamping the system, restructuring cricketing in Sri Lanka, um, the administration, bringing about reforms. What do we need now going forward? Uh, you speak about the good we have here. We have a lot of talent, an abundance of talent. But if it is underutilized, what's the point? How do we move forward? It's not underutilized. It's wrongly utilized. You see, if I really think we need to change our constitution to get anything right. Because having 147 votes and getting elected to a system where you have to pander to the clubs will never work. I can assure you, till a minister, and I hope this minister will do it, has the courage to say, enough is enough, I'm changing the constitution, and I'm going to revamp the system, we will not make progress. 
it's an interesting situation. There is a technical committee now, and they've made some recommendations. Mm -hmm. I'm very keen to see whether those recommendations are going to be seen through. Because whatever anybody recommends, if the board doesn't do it, and the board won't do it because the board is obliged to the stakeholders, which are the clubs. So that needs to be broken, you see. You know, we talk about a lot of negatives. A positive, I like to mention a positive, is the LPL uh, board participated. Having the cities um, playing. I think our four-day tournament should be played under the same banner. We should have a four-day tournament where the best 60 cricketers compete under the LPL banner. And that would be a good move. Mm -hmm. Let's see whether that happens, you know. Uh, is this technical committee, uh, is this uh, the committee represented by Mutaya Murlidhar and uh, Roshan Mahanama? Absolutely, Sangakara yes. And Mahana so they that have voluntary level, they're, they're voluntarily providing their Correct. expertise. So they, I'm waiting to see what their recommendations will be and let's see whether they will be implemented and carried through. Mm -hmm. The problems we have had in the last 20 years is somebody comes and starts something, the next guy comes and forgets it and we start from scratch again. It seems to be a Sri Lankan uh, characteristic, <laughs> I don't know. Um, you, you express hope that the current sports minister would be able to take into consideration these recommendations, but over time you've seen sports ministers uh, in good faith wanting to do a lot uh, for the game, because this this is one of the biggest uh, games. Uh, Sri, Lankan, Sri Lankan fans love cricket um, and we talk about uh, matches and in the past, uh, in the recent past, we haven't seen any winning series matches and uh, therefore leading to a lot of disappointment among um, our fans. But uh, current uh, Minister Nama Rajapaksa, has he, has he reached out to senior former players as you um, for, for support and if you have been requested, in, in what way would you contribute to the game? Only time will tell, you know. I think the the Honourable Minister knows what the issues are. He's been a sportsman himself. He should know what needs to be done. We've shouted about this for years now, and I'm saying it again, until we change our constitution, and a specific constitution for cricket, where we professionalise the management, not just an honorary job where people just come and spend a year and go, you know, we need to professionalize our board like in other countries. For example, South Africa just appointed an in independent chairman of the board. So every country has got a very professional system of running their cricket. But we are still clinging to this archaic system, which is uh, just a joke in my opinion. Uh, at the beginning of our conversation, you mentioned about uh, depleted infrastructure, that uh, we, we never moved ahead with the evolving nature of the game. Um, but, but we continue to face that, even at school level, uh, lack of uh, infrastructure, regardless of how much money flows into the country as a result of this game. Uh, how do we change this? How do we bring in a system, in your opinion, um, to, to ensure that uh, the distribution of infrastructure through all provinces, because talent, you never know where talent comes from. Um, Absolutely, our talent is spread all over the country today. You know, We should be reaching out, we should be developing our provincial centers, we should be having the right infrastructure in those areas so that the players in those areas can be fostered through that system, then fed into the clubs as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's a system which many people can visualize, but they don't want to do. We've tried, I've tried this for many, many years and failed because the, the, the nature of our constitution and the voting structure is such, anybody who thinks out of the box is just, uh, uh, not going to make headway. And the sad thing and the fear I have is before long we are going to end up losing to Ireland, we are going to end up losing to Oman, we are going to end up losing to Afghanistan, and then we will be out of the top 10 teams. And when that happens, the money will dry. 
television won't come and pay us the money they've been paying over the last so many years. We got fabulous uh, funds coming in, uh, great revenue coming in because of the quality of our players. After the World Cup, Sri Lanka became a product television could sell. But you've got to ask the question, can they sell Sri Lanka now? And that is my fear that before long, the money is going to dry up and then, then there won't be anything we can do. It, it's going to be too late. So these players too uh, owe it to the 1996 team uh, for the glory that uh, they, they, uh, they experienced now and they actually enjoy uh, the benefits of the hard work of uh, Sri Lanka cricket back in the day. But at the same time, it is also their responsibility to make sure that we continue um, our name uh, at international level. Um, but but uh, I once again want to ask you whether you would want to um, be a contributor to uh, Sri Lanka cricket at any level. You see, I've been involved in this now for nearly 20 years. Mm -hmm. We've done enough, you know, it's the time, the younger, it's time for the younger generation to get involved. But even for the younger generation to get involved, as I said, the likes of Mile and all of them, the system must be right. And if the system isn't right, they're not going to attract mm -hmm. those good players to come and get involved. But the way things are now, forget the system, I think our players, ex-players need to get involved and pull us out of this rut or we are in big trouble. Let's uh, revisit uh, the glorious days of Sri Lanka cricket. Uh, well, well, the beginning of the, the tough days when, when um, Sri Lanka cricket toiled to be recognized at test level. Uh, you were part of our team back in the day and uh, the first century for Sri Lanka cricket. You hold the record. Uh, let's let's uh, recollect those memories. I'd like to hear from you. Yeah, you see, I, I always say in the 70s, we had some great players. We had mm -hmm. some superb players who, given the same opportunity uh, the post-test era had, mm -hmm. would have done wonders. You know, the likes of Michael Tissera, Anura Tenakon, uh, so many. Uh, my brother Sunil. There were so many great players in the 60s leading up to the 70s. Mm -hmm. And we played the game mainly for the joy of it, just wanting to wear that cap. And test status was a dream. You know, I remember when I was 23, 24, you know, all I would say is, you know, I want to play a test match one day. You know, I want to play a test match. And after 10 years of cricket, when I retired in 87, you know, we, I was paid 10,000 rupees for a whole test match. Today, I think the meal allowance for the day for a day is higher than that. So things have changed. And that's good, you know, that's very good. But we need to take this to the next level. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the sad thing. So, you know, in our day, it was for the joy of the game. You know, it was to be able to say you played for your country, do something and feel that we could pass the baton to the next lot to take it further. And they did. Arjuna and the players who came up with him did a great job. And then, even through 2000, you know, we did tremendously well till just a few years ago when things started to go down. But even back in 2000, I said, we need to make these changes or we will face what we are facing today. But nobody listened. Uh, I mean, we, we had a second tier always, regardless of uh, senior players' retirement. But after Mahela, Sangha, um, TM Delshan, uh, we haven't. So, so who's responsible? Uh, who's responsible for this uh, uh, this situation? You know, I don't want to blame any one individual, but it's the system. How, how did that happen before? Uh, because we, we we probably had a uh, had a great system in place. Because uh, every time we had our senior players retiring, we saw somebody taking the baton on. Um, we had a system which was adequate in those years, up to 96, up to 2000, we managed. And the talent that had come through saw us through till the likes of Mahela, Kumar, Sanat, all of them disappeared. But then we've fallen into a big black hole. Mm -hmm. And that is because we did not prepare for the next uh, 10, 20 years to come. So we did not change with the times, and now we are paying the price. 
And as I said, my fear is we are going to get so exposed unless we turn this around fast by losing to the likes of Ireland, Oman, Afghanistan. And then it's going to be a long, hard grind to get back to where we were. That would be a shame if we uh, allow ourselves to go there. Um, uh, I'd like to move on to talk a little about uh, not just cricket, but sport overall in Sri Lanka. Um, everyone focuses on cricket and probably uh, we, we don't talk much about the talent uh, outside cricket. Uh, they too have a lot of um, lot of difficulties, infrastructure issues. Uh, they don't have the kind of money that uh, cricket has. Uh, Sri Lanka cricket gets. Um, talking about all this, uh, do we do we require more regulations to govern uh, sports as a whole in Sri Lanka? Um, and and uh, in your opinion, as a, as a as a former uh, sportsman, what do you think we need to do to uplift sport in Sri Lanka? Yes, I think we need structure. I, I, I'm aware that Mahela is involved in mm -hmm. the Sports Council and they are trying to restructure and uh, get a little more organization into all the sports. You see, Sri Lanka will always have talent. I remember the great Sir Gary Sobers telling me once, okay. he said, talent is coordination. Mm -hmm. And we Sri Lankans are well coordinated, you know. You pick a ball and throw and you know whether he's talented or not. And I think it applies to any sport. We have talent. We are a nation of talented kids. We just need to have the system and the, the progression in place so that whoever the sportsman is can do better and better. So I think uh, that's all the time we have here at Hyde Park. But thank you very much. It was indeed an honor f to talk to you tonight at Hyde Park. Pleasure being with you. Uh, we had with us Siddharth Vettamuni, uh, one of Sri Lanka's greatest players, cricket. Cricket is um, produced in Sri Lanka, the first century for Sri Lanka cricket, test cricket. Uh, was by Sadat Vettamuni and of course he holds a lot of uh, records for Sri Lanka and today we spoke about um, how Sri Lanka cricket can move ahead in the evolving nature of the game. Thank you for joining us at Hyde Park.